In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to create the facing for the bodice. And this will include the front facing, which is here, running from the shoulder, and then the back neck facing. And the purpose of a facing is to give the garment a really nice finish around the neck. So here you can see uh, the draft that's already been created with the facing on, so you can see highlighted in uh, yellow here. That's going to be the front facing to the shoulder, and then we have the back facing there. So, the process. What I've done here is I've set up a draft, I've turned my paper uh, in a different direction, I've still created the horizontal line, which is obviously now vertical because of the way I've laid my paper, and then placed my, um, my front bodice and my back bodice as I normally would on the horizontal line with the underarm points touching. I've added my button stand at 0 0.75 onto the center front line. And then now I'm gonna create the facing. So the, what we have to do is, because we want the facing to actually run really smoothly on the neckline, and I'll just show you again here on the demonstration, a really nice curved line flowing nicely between the front and the back. You have to grab and take your back block like so. And what we're gonna do is actually place this on the shoulder like this. But at the moment you can see we've got an open dart. So just taking our uh, front bodice in the same procedure as we did before. And I just want to close the leg of the dart like so. Drawing in just a little bit making sure I've got the corner and I'm just closing the shoulder. So therefore I can see quite clearly now this is the shoulder without the dart in the neck area. Take the back bodice, placing this nice and carefully on the shoulder like so, because this is what would sew together. Again, drawing down the armhole, adding the notches, don't need to go any further than that, and then just round the neckline to the corner, drawing down the center back line. And then I've got an image of where my back and my front join together at the shoulder. This then allows me to create a really nice curve shape here on the shoulder so that when I make my patterns and trace them off, they will sit nicely. So as a designer, um, you decide on the width of your facing. So working from uh, the button stand, I've now decided that I'm actually going to measure um, and create my stand at two and a half centimeters. So using my pattern master, again, if you look at your pattern master, one centimeter, two and a half centimeters here, I can actually add that to my center front line. That's two and a half, placing it on the button stand line here and drawing a nice line like so. Then I've obviously got a curve to work with here using my pattern master, placing it on this line here, 2.5, and just working round nice and steady and creating the two and a half centimeter measurement. Doing that on the shoulder line and then coming round the back neck. Till I get to the center back line, two and a half like so. So then this is where you can get your pattern mask and I'm just gonna turn this around to make it more comfortable for myself. This bit is my center back and as I've mentioned before, if we decide to mirror the back piece so that it becomes a full piece, this has got to be 90 degree angles. I would at this stage expect students and pattern cutters to actually write center back straight of grain on there for reference. Then I'm using my pattern master just to curve around, creating a nice shape, making a nice shape here on the shoulder. So now we know we can clearly see that when these join, they're gonna match nicely on the shoulder. And that's the only reason why you actually sit your back draft on there, your back block on there like that. Just curving around. Now, um, the reason why I wouldn't have a 
facing on this shape with such a severe curve here or sh sharp corner is because this is going to turn into a piece of fabric and what you have got to think about is the manufacturing processes. <clears throat> So if I was trying to put this shape under a sewing machine, an overlocker, this would be really a, quite a tight corner to manipulate. So the best thing to do is have a really nice curve. And again, I would just use my pattern master <clears throat> and join it like that. So then my pattern shape will look and flow something like that. And that is how it's very, uh, very easy to create a face in. So then, as I've mentioned before, when you're tracing patterns off, you place a piece of paper over the top of your draft. So you place your pieces of paper over the draft and trace off, and then you actually get a pattern piece like so, making sure that you put center back on, cut on the fold, piece information on there as normal, and the same with your facing. So you end up with, and if I just put this back on, you'll clearly see where the pattern piece has been traced from. So this is your front facing from there and then your back facing. And what you must make sure that you do is on your patterns, because the center back, if you remember the bodice that we're creating, this is the back facing and the center back is cut on the fold. It's all one piece. So here, we want the symbol cut on fold, which is this shape here. So no seam allowance down the centre back. It's half a centimetre all the way around everywhere else. With the front facing, half a centimetre all the way around, and then it's one centimetre at the hem, as we did with the front pattern pieces.